Sibray and uh, your release from prison in December 2011, uh, you said they were, were going to be bringing these corrupt, oppressive, malicious prosecutions against you until they've succeeded in either intimidating you into silence or driving you out of Jersey permanently. Are these old lever archer folder here, folders here on the floor uh, an example of this malicious prosecution and intimidation? Uh, a a absolutely. Uh, this is an example um, of what is called a, a slap internationally, a strategic lawsuit against public participation. And what we see here, and this is merely one of a variety of uh, cases and court uh, proceedings I could mention, what we see here is essentially the island's court, the politicised judicial function in Jersey, with actually conflicted senior individuals in it, doing its level best to silence public interest disclosure. And of course one of the profound difficulties that people like me and other ordinary people have in Jersey is that we don't have the money of course to properly fight these legal actions. And we see 18 giant lever arch files here. Some of them are five and six hundred pages per file. These are being paid for and produced by an army of lawyers paid out for out of public funds and I'm uh, an unrepresented individual who's expected to respond to this kind of legal avalanche, this legal barrage against me. Sometimes I get these documents served on me and I'm supposed to be in court to answer 500 pages of fresh argument with 36 hours notice. Now, this is simply not the proper administration of justice. You know, no credible system works this way. And the judicial administration in Jersey is essentially a criminal enterprise, indeed, as I've said in court. And it's uh, surprising, in fact, that the UK government continues to tolerate the antics and the extraordinary conduct of the judicial function in the island, whereby the actual Jersey judges themselves or their friends, who they appoint to be judges, are directly conflicted in these cases. Well, you just mentioned it there that you've had a 500-page document and 36 hours to respond to it. As a litigant and person, that's a pretty strong argument for intimidation, isn't it? Well, that, that's exactly um, how these things work, I'm afraid, in places like Jersey. In most um, corrupt environments, the, the, the corruption, the coercion that's done to members of the public is much more crude and basic. In many other jurisdictions, they actually have gangsters and people that will come around and beat you up and things of that nature. Jersey's much more sophisticated than that. Here they engage in this kind of intimidation, this oppressive barrage of absurd legal cases and legal documents that they know perfectly well an ordinary person has no chance of responding to adequately, even if the courts were objective and impartial. But of course they're not. So not only are ordinary people in Jersey not given a meaningful, properly uh, resourced opportunity to resist these kind of legal cases, it's also the case that even if we did try to, the courts are biased and the courts don't meet even the test of the appearance of objectivity. There's a lot of that about at the minute, the um, corruption in the what's been called politicised and corrupt judicial system. Uh, you've taken your concerns regarding, regarding this alleged corruption to the Secretary of Justice who has responsibility for the rule of law and good governance and Crown dependencies. What kind of response have you had from him? Uh, the response that I, I get uh, is the same that all of the other many, many complainants from Jersey to the authorities in London get. We receive a pro forma dismissal uh, to the effect that, well, look, Jersey has a legislature, Jersey has a judiciary, you know, these are internal matters for Jersey and it's nothing to do with us. Now this answer is wholly inadequate and simply not lawful because the responsibility of the authorities in London, by their own admission, is that they have to ensure that Jersey has a real functioning legislature, one that's able to work properly and democratically. London is responsible for us having a proper, objective judiciary, the real and fair and effective administration of justice. We don't have those things in Jersey, quite obviously. It's politicised, it's conflicted. The various court actions taking place against me have effectively uh, had judges either directly conflicted or the directly conflicted judges have appointed their friends to hear those cases. Now, that is simply unlawful. Uh, it's not even a, a credible dispute. Uh, long ago settled, 
in English uh, case law, even before there was a European Convention on Human Rights, the Jersey administration of justice simply isn't lawful. It's politicised, it's conflicted, it's a sham, it's a Potemkin village. Yet, I'm afraid the authorities in London continue to fail to meet their lawful obligations, which is why the legal action against the authorities in London will have to be taken. And of course, these kind of cases that are ongoing, this ongoing legal and judicial oppression against effective political opposition in Jersey, carries on adding to the body of evidence that's going to be used uh, in those legal proceedings. Well, I want to go on to your lever artists here. You say you've got 18, you've got many more at home. Probably uh, hundreds. Uh. Probably hundreds. Um, well, it's been openly discussed in the Ireland's Parliament with questions uh, and the rest of it and that you are subject to a super injunction or a secret court case. Can you uh, confirm or deny this? I, I, I can't comment on that. Um, there's a possibility if I did I'd be jailed again. Okay. Well that sort of gives us an answer. That we're, to be fair, it's um, it's been on the state media, it's, it's online, uh, everybody seems to be talking about it. Uh, it's even been like I say, printed in the disgraced Jersey Evening Post. Uh, surely you, be, you can say something. Uh, I, I can't comment on, on, on that. There's a risk I'll, I'll be imprisoned again. I don't like to labour the point, push the point, uh, but because this is of huge public interest. Um, to be fair, it ha it's even been mentioned in the House of Commons by John Hemmings. It's on the Hansard. Uh, it's published to the world. Uh, how is it that everybody else can talk about this alleged super injunction and secret court case, and you can't? Uh, I, I can't. I'm, I can't comment on that question. There's a, a, a danger that I would be uh, uh, imprisoned. Well, I'm going to take that. If, well, I'm going to take it that you are subject to a super injunction and a, and a secret court case, if it's all the same with you. Uh, you may uh, have that opinion. I couldn't possibly comment. So what is your next uh, manoeuvre? I said we've got all these lever arch files here. What exactly is, is going on? What can you talk about in the way of court cases? Um, the, 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 the court cases that matter are going to be the court cases that are going to be run in London and that's obviously the case because fundamentally the judiciary in Jersey is wholly conflicted uh, and is producing frankly dangerous precedents. The courts in Jersey are doing what we call making judge-made law, often law that has no relationship at all to the original legislative intent of our democratic legislature. For example, the data protection law unambiguously has safeguards in it for public interest disclosure, opposing crime, exposing crime and indeed engaging in investigative journalism. That's clearly in the law, democratically approved. Jersey's courts have decided to effectively mount a coup against democracy, have decided they don't like that democratic decision, so they're going to interpret the law and produce judge-made law that does the diametric opposite of that actual democratically approved legislation. So all the safeguards that were democratically approved don't count for anything because Jersey's courts are doing judge-made law that says the complete opposite. Now, Jersey's courts, when producing these dangerous precedents, not only are they conflicted, they also engage in what are clearly acts of open and overt corruption, judicial corruption. For example, I produced in one of the prosecutions against me a crushingly uh, overwhelming defence case that simply destroyed the prosecution case against me. This was the defence case, took three months' work involving expert witnesses. Three days after this was submitted to the court, the court simply decided, um, actually we've uh, changed our mind and your defence is no longer admissible. Now, this is simply corruption. You know, let, let's not beat around the bush. This is just uh, judicial corruption. But even though that's a profoundly unsafe set of court proceedings, engaging in clearly corrupt decisions and producing profoundly flawed judgments, nevertheless, those judgments enter the kind of case law archive, the judge-made law, that then affects all the rest of us. So effectively, by stealth, Jersey's courts have 
de facto made public interest disclosure and investigative journalism illegal, without there even being any democratic legislative approval for that. So that's an example of how Jersey's courts can't be taken seriously. There are no functioning checks and balances to turn to in Jersey, which is why we have to enforce their duties and responsibilities on the Crown authorities in London via London's courts to ensure that we do in fact get a proper objective judiciary in Jersey. But of course they just ignore all this and send back template letters. We've been all through this on the blog, they're turning a blind eye to it. Can we, to finish John, because there's those of us that believe that the democratically elected politicians aren't running this island at all. They haven't got any power. The, the real power on this island is in the, what most of us to believe to be, a corrupt and politicised politicized judicial system. Do, do you? Th that's absolutely correct. I mean, J Jersey in reality, when you scrape beneath the, the kind of uh, the, the fake shallow picture of democracy we have, it is very clear to see that Jersey is effectively still a feudal society run by the Crown, run by the Crown's judicial system in Jersey. You know, the monarch empowers these people in the island with letters patent and they're then effectively given carte blanche to do and say as they please. Uh, and they routinely override and treat with contempt the island's democratic processes and undermine the business of scrutinising government policies. For example, we see judges like the bailiffs and deputy bailiffs routinely interfering with the propositions and the questions brought by opposition members of the legislature. And we even see the corrupted, conflicted prosecution function in Jersey oppressing democratically elected opposition politicians and their friends in the Jersey judiciary then furthering that corruption. So, of course, Jersey's uh, democracy, quote unquote, is essentially fake and the place is run by the island's legal uh, clique. In the judiciary? Absolutely. The island's judiciary and the island's prosecution system is the real power in the island. And I think the authorities in London know that and they've been content for it to be that way for um, many, many decades, centuries even. Which is why, as you correctly say, all of the people in Jersey who do write routinely complaints about abuses of their rights and breaches of the justice in Jersey to London, they simply get dismissed. Which is why merely writing a complaint no longer will do and the legal action has to be taken to actually hold the authorities in London to account. Well, we'll see how things get along. I want to thank you for the interview. Anything you want to say about any court cases you might be involved in with secret super injunctions? I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs>